Hey girl. Uh -huh. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We have a visitor with us today. It is my dog. She wanted to be in the video. She wanted to talk about books today. Since it is National Women's Month, I wanted to discuss some of my favorite characters in books that are women. Also give you the plot line of all that stuff. I'm not going to spoil anything, but why they're my favorite character and why you should read the book too. First off, we're going to start with Miss Pip. She is in A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. She is a senior in high school. For her senior project, she's decided to prove someone's innocence. A few years ago, there was this girl and she died. Someone killed her. Her boyfriend, he died in the woods and said that he killed her. She's out here for her senior project trying to prove his innocence. She doesn't think that he did it. As she's trying to do all of this research, as she's trying to do all this research to prove this guy's innocence, things go down. She is getting threats. She is smart, but she's stupid sometimes. Girl, just tell people where you're going. It's really not that hard. Again, you are 17. She develops a cute relationship, friendship with Ravi, who is the younger brother to the boy who committed suicide. And there is a lot of twists and turns in this book. I literally had to read it through the night. I could not put this book down when I was reading it. It is so good. I want to read the rest of the series. I heard it gets really dark. There's barely any romance. I wouldn't really say this is a romance book. It's just a really good mystery YA book. The next book I want to talk about is Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I kind of have mixed feelings about her books. I either really like them or I find them boring, but this book is really good. It's the first book that I've read where it's an interview style. You can see they have different characters. If you don't like that type of formatting, I highly recommend for you to watch the show. It's on Amazon video? Amazon Prime video? Amazon. It's a series. It's so good. If you love 70s fashion, music, culture, also it, it's kind of a play on Fleetwood Mac, which is one of my all-time favorite bands ever. I really like this book, but Daisy Jones is actually not my favorite character. She is complex, has her own issues, and is going through it, but my favorite character is Camilla. She is just, she is that girl. Beautiful on the outside and inside. She's just very supportive. She's just there for Billy for all his ups and downs and everything that he went through and what he, he did to her but she is that girl and I love her and she is the best character in this book. The next book is Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I bought this book because of TikTok. I wasn't the biggest fan. I thought this book was okay. I started reading the second book and I DNF'd it. Well technically I didn't read it, I was listening to it but I was getting so frustrated with the second book that I've stopped that but I'll continue eventually but I just couldn't do it. This book, another pet peeve that I have really fast is people label this book as a romance book. This is not a romance book. This is not an enemies to lovers. This is just enemies right now. This book is fantasy also. It follows Jude and her twin sister that we're not going to name because I don't like her. They are the only humans really. I mean there are humans in this world but they're not treated well. Kind of were forced into this fairy world. All Jude wants is to be respected. She wants to have power because who doesn't want power? Because she's been pushed around by people in this world her whole life pure hatred towards her. And her sister tries to go with the flow, she tries to go with the flow, but it doesn't work. So she tries to push back. I love Jude. She is my favorite character in this franchise, this whole book series. Again, granted, I have only read one and a half in the series. She's just such an intriguing character to me because the way that she's described it's very power hungry, it's very calculated, it's very manipulative. And a lot of people don't like that in women characters. You know, they swoon over the man that does it, but don't like when women do it in movies, TV shows, books. If you are looking for romance, this series, I don't really think, maybe it gets a little bit more spicier in the second and third book, but this first book, nothing happens. It is a world building book, which I really like, but I have no connection really to any any other characters except for Jude. I think Jude is an amazing character. She is bloodthirsty. She is powerful. She knows how to wield a sword. She knows how to use her tongue 
okay that came out really wrong she knows how to use her words as a weapon i was gonna say her tongue is a sword but you know that just didn't sound right now i'm kind of offended i think i said in another video that people said if you're a scorpio you would love this um i'm kind of offended that you think scorpios are calculated manipulative power hungry but again like i am a scorpio and i do love her so i don't know what that says about me the next book is my favorite book in the series, and that is Heartless by Elsie Silver. It's not my favorite just for Daddy Cade, no. It's my favorite because of Willa. She is this red-headed, free-flowing, early 20s woman, and she has quips. She has banter with Cade. She puts him in his place. She makes him feel younger again because he's this grumpy man, but he feels more lighthearted and he actually laughs with her and I love her. I just, I really, really, really like this book. I, I tabbed a lot of it. It's not so much to like just the spice, even though it was good, but Willa is just I, I want to be Willa, not only because she's with Cade, but also because she's just so free. She just lives life and just kind of goes with the flow and just kind of goes one place to another, says what she wants to say, and I love that for her. Peyton from Powerless. She is so cool. <laughs> the things that she's had to go through in her life and still have the strength to persevere, like she had to grow up on the streets. Also, to top it off, she lives in a society of people who have power powers and she is powerless. She has no powers. Basically growing up alone, she meets the prince and she ends up saving his life. Somehow after this happens, she is thrown into these Hunger Game-like games where all of the other contestants are young teenagers who have powers. She just wants to survive. She makes a great connection with Kai, the one that she saved. And I think this is another book that's mislabeled. I know I've done it, is calling this book an enemies to lovers. She's had to be on guard her whole life. She doesn't trust anyone. Another one who's very calculated in what she does. Kai and Peyton are strangers to rivals, to partners. There's always attraction there, but I wouldn't say that they're lovers because it's a very, 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 very slow burn book. But I love that because it's building on their relationship, their dynamic, what is going to continue on in the second book. And I think Peyton is just a strong character. You see her evolve at the end of the book and I'm so excited. Listen to me when I say I am so excited for the second book to drop. It is going to be months from now. I am upset about that, but it is teaching me the art of patience and I need to work on my patience. The next book is another book that is a part of a series that is my favorite book. Well, tied for my favorite book in the series and that is Twisted Lies by Anna Huang. Stella and Christian. Where do I begin? I love Christian. If there is a billionaire suited, don't touch her or you die man out there watching this, I didn't know how I was going to feel about this book. When Stella's introduced in the other books before hers, because this is the last book in the series, there's three other books before this. When she's mentioned, one, she's barely even there. And when she is mentioned, she's like an influencer, social media girl, that's, that's her job. The story building in this book, from beginning to end, I didn't want to put this book down. She has had a stalker in the past, and so this book is her dealing with her stalker, dealing with Christian Harper, dealing with her family, her friendships, her career, what she's gonna do. It's just such a great book and I really liked it, but I really do love Stella. I think she's just a very strong character. Another honorable mention that is tied with this book is Jules, which is Twisted Hate. I think what she had to grow up with, what she had to deal with her whole life, I think she's also a very strong character. I just, I love my redhead characters. They're just, I love her. Stella, she's just a, a quiet, soft-spoken, just kind of a feminine energy girl, and I just love my tall representation. I think she's like 5'10 and I'm 5'11. And again, just Christian Harper. When will it be my turn? The next book is Nora from Book Lovers. This was the last book that I've read of Emily Henry's. With Emily Henry books, I always get mixed reviews. I was kind of nervous going into this, so 
I first listened to this book on Spotify just to see if I liked it or not and right away I knew I would because it's touching on those small town romances which I do love. I am a sucker for small town romances even though I live in a small town it's like an escape from my small town to another small town that actually has hot men. It just kind of touches on that trope where it's like the cutthroat businessman who goes to this small town to buy this little small mom and pop hotel. He falls in love with the daughter of the hotel owners or the cutthroat man comes to this small town to take over this Christmas tree farm's land but falls in love with the owner of the Christmas tree farm and ends up moving to the small town and being with her. And so she touches on the fact that like Nora is not that go to small town fall in love romance. She is this loves the city girl. She is a literary agent in this cutthroat chaos world of books. So her sister, her sister's pregnant and wants to take her sister to the small town and wants to find peace and happiness in the small town. And instead of finding peace or falling in love with a small town burly man, she keeps running to Charlie. Now she's met Charlie in the past. She's had to run a few ideas through him because he's an editor. He's very to the point, very serious dude. And she's like, what are you doing in this small town? You're from the city. And he goes, no, I'm actually from this small town. He also hates small towns. And so the banter in this book is, I, I'm just, I'm a sucker for banter. If you can banter with me, if you understand my sarcasm and I hit you with a few things and you come back, like, I'm in love with you. I just want you to know that. I think it's my second favorite book of Emily Henry's. I just love the idea of being in a book world, living in New York, but finding peace in a small town, realizing what you truly love, finding connections where you least expect it. It's just a whole serendipitous, kind of like an invisible strings type book and I just love that. The Predator by Runks. Now that's how I'm gonna say the author's name. I don't know if that's is really how you say it but it sounds like it. R-U-N-Y-X. Runix. You can say that too. This is part of the dark verse. I read this last month for my dark romance reading month. It was a brutal month. I really didn't like a lot of the books that I read but this was the only book that I enjoyed thoroughly from beginning to end. I couldn't put this book down. I think I finished it in like a day, maybe even less than a day, but I didn't have the rest of the series. So I went on Amazon and I bought the second book because I tried to go to Barnes and Noble, they didn't have it. So I bought the book on Amazon, I have it. I'm excited to read the second one because this one does leave off on a cliffhanger. It's about Marana. She is a part of this mob family. Her dad is a mob leader. Then you have Tristan Kane. Tristan has been adopted into the rival family. Of Marana. He is this bodyguard to his adopted brother. Very stoic, very brooding, mystery man. He is obsessed and not in a good way with Marana. They have to work together. They literally want to kill each other throughout the whole book. The first scene that they have together, she's trying to kill him. Non-stop. It goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But tell me why I'm obsessed with it. Not only do I love Marana, she has to deal with so much in her family. This will with her dad. You know, one cannot comprehend what it's like to be a part of a mob family, but it doesn't sound fun. She's this very, very intellectual woman who isn't taken very seriously. I just really, really, really like her strength throughout this whole book. She's not timid. She's not cowering away from fear. She faces it head on. I really, 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 really like her and jealous of her at the same time because she gets to deal with Tristan. Stop. I'm like blushing again rereading some of these quotes that I've tabbed. Also, this is the first book where he has like an original name. I've never heard a man call a woman wildcat. And I think that's so cute. Like, not like Wildcat, like High School Musical, but like, I mean, I guess it could be. Now I'm gonna think that. I actually like Wildcat. There's one quote that I wanna read you just to tell you exactly what this book is about and how it has captured my heart and will never let me go. No one else gets to kill you, Miss Vitalio, which is Marana. The last face you see before you die will be mine. When it comes to death, you're mine. Tell me why he says this to her, yet still protects her. Stop it. I'm done. And the last book that I want to talk about is 
Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This is the second book that I've ever read from Allie Hazelwood. The first being Love Theoretically. I listened to that on Spotify and I really, 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 really liked it. I love Jack. I love Elsie. So I wanted to give this a read. I also heard, you know, it's definitely stepping out of Allie Hazelwood's comfort zone with this book. She is a writer when it comes to STEM. This is not STEM. This is fantasy. This is a vampire girl, werewolf man, specifically alpha of a pack. It's an arranged marriage between the two to join species, kind of live in happy harmony. She thinks that he hates her. He doesn't want to be around her. He always talks about how her smell is overbearing. She's like, okay, I'll take a shower. Like, <laughs> just like funny dialogues here and there. It's just, it's so cute. You know, I've never wanted an alpha man, but Lo, Allie Hazelwood, if she can do one thing, it's writing about a man, you know, a... This is about women, Hannah. This is a video about women and empowering women, okay? Misery, that's unfortunate, but it, that's the female main character in this book. Misery is a vampire. She has had to put her family, put her species before herself. She has her best friend that she always puts first. However, her best friend goes missing and she's trying to find more details about where her best friend goes. So much happens in this book, but there's also the beauty and the quiet moments that they have together and I think their relationship is so cute. It's dealing with mates and faded mates and love or forbidden love. I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a second book in this series so I'm very excited to see how that's gonna go but I love Misery. I think she is a very strong woman. She doesn't really care about anyone else except for her best friend because that's really the only person that's truly showed her love and care until she meets Lo and his family. It's very whole it's very sweet. There is spicy stuff in it. There's some things that I just don't know if I want to dive a little bit deeper into because it's a little concerning about what I'm gonna find, but I'm kind of curious about it, so I'm still probably gonna do it. It's the whole werewolf, vampire, omegaverse. I still don't even really know what omegaverse is. I probably should stop saying omegaverse. It's a whole world out there. I don't want to know if I want to dive deeply into that, but I am very curious to read more. I heard there was another one called The Faded Mate. That's a new book that's out that's kind of along the lines of Bride, so I feel like I might give that one a read or listen to it on Spotify and see how that goes, but I really did enjoy this book. I really liked Misery. I thought she was a great female character. Now, I know there are more books. I do want to be reading more. I have the whole Akatar series that I want to read. I have the fourth wing that a lot of people talk about. There are so many other books that I want to read. Please let me know what your favorite female character is. If I included it in this video, if I didn't, let me know your thoughts on the female characters in the comments below. If you want to follow me on any other other social media platforms. I will have them linked down below. Happy National Women's Month and I hope to be seeing you in the next video. Bye!